Do you know the 14 traits of successful chiropractors? We've interviewed some of the top chiropractors in the industry and have identified the common traits that they all share. Jump on over to www.chirobusinessmojo.com to get your free report today. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. That's right. I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and checking us out today. Well, we're going to get straight to it. We are going to get straight to part two of our great interview with Roberto Monaco. Yeah, we have a that's I've been super obsessed with communication. Why? Because I struggle my life so much that I, I promised myself I was not going to struggle again. And I study everything from rhetoric to traditional public speaking to to communication to influence to advertising to uh, even homiletic, which is the science of preaching to decision making. I combine all the fields to make sure I use every single piece of communication that can help me advance my mission and the mission of my clients. Well, you talked a little bit about vi- video marketing, and I want to touch on that just briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Facebook estimates that within five years, the majority of its content is going to be video. So yeah. what are some of the things we can do to create more effective videos? Yeah. Well, if you follow Influenceology, you'll notice that I use a ton of video. I actually started teaching video marketing Six years ago, when nobody was doing video marketing, because video marketing for me was just an extension of speaking. So, a couple of things that you can do. Number one, besides uh, anything else, consistency is the most important thing. So, the best thing that you can do for your career, I promise you, is to to commit today. I want to record one quick video a week, just one. People say I want to do every day or two times a week. If you do one a week for the rest of your career, you just gonna blow it up. Consistency in video marketing is, is key so that you can follow, uh, you can create a following. Number two, you want to create short videos. Obviously, TED Talk videos, 18 minutes work for TED Talks, but the average person is not as well trained or qualified to deliver amazing 18 minute talk. By the way, when people deliver a TED Talk, they, they, they go over that talk like probably a thousand times. That's why it's so compelling. And if you want to record a video every week, you want to create a, a, a video as short as possible. Now, sometimes one minute is enough. Sometimes it's five minutes. Just keep in mind that uh, the longer you go, the harder it is to, to capture people's attention. The third thing is this, is that you want to uh, capture every single uh, question, idea, story you hear. The, one of the most important things that you can do for video marketing is this. You have to create a a database of your ideas. Now, I use Evernote. Right? Uh, you can use old school notebook. You can use a Word document file, whatever. But you want to be, you want to create this habit. This is important of create ideas for content. So I have like a thousand, probably more ideas for content on my Evernote. Why is that important? Let's say I'm talking to you and you ask me a question that I haven't covered. Right after the podcast, I'm going to write it down. Why? Because I never want to run out of ideas. So let's say I want to record a video next week. I just go to my database uh, of questions say, oh, yeah, uh, Dr. Rich asked me this question last week. So I have the whole week to think about a three-minute message. Then when I go in front of a computer camera or the phone, it's easy for me. So I'm always capturing uh, ideas, always. And I'm reading. If I, if I found something interesting, I go and I capture all right? So very important. So consistency, make sure your videos are short. You want to capture ideas. And then the, you, you, you don't want to be comparing yourself with other people because some people have been, they had some people that are amazing speakers. Some people, they have media training. Some people done a thousand videos. And then when you record your video in the beginning, you want to feel super uncomfortable. I promise you, if you haven't done a lot of video, which is okay. But you start it and you start it and you start it and you start it. Now, nowadays, I, I do a lot of uh, video marketing using my phone. Now, I do have the fancy camera. I have the, the shotgun mics. I have the wireless mics. I spend all this money. I do, I do bought all the stuff and I do it. But nowadays, you can buy a little Rode mic 
you, you pay like 78 bucks on Amazon Rode uh, Lavalier mic with your smartphone and you're in business. So one advice I can give you with the video marketing is this. You start where you're at right now, where you are. Uh, if you say, Roberto, I don't have a, a gear or a camera, start there. So with your phone, most people have a smartphone. Just buy a little microphone. The one I recommend is uh, Rode Lavalier. If you, if you type it up, uh, Rode Lavalier mic for uh, smartphone on Amazon. I pay. I just bought one last week, another one, 70 bucks, 78 bucks. And uh, now you're in business. And you can buy a little tripod for your smartphone too, tripod adapter. And now you have it. And then the most important thing is consistency. So when you record a video, I put them – that that's uh, that has changed too. A year ago, YouTube, uh, all we had to do is to upload a video on YouTube and share on Facebook. But obviously, Facebook doesn't like YouTube videos. So what you want to do now, you want to upload on both. Now, on a short term, when you upload a video on YouTube, you're going to get more juice. You're going to have more views and, and likes and share. So you're going to do a hu- huge impact. Now, long term, YouTube is 10 times better. Why? Because YouTube is a search engine. Like I can give an example. Every 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 month, even when I don't record videos, which is rare because I'm out recording. Uh, let's say I'm traveling in a month and record two or three videos. Okay, um, the average watch time in my page on YouTube is around six days, no hours. So in a month, people watch my content six days, sometimes seven days, sometimes ten days, which is a lot. If you and and uh, because that's the total amount of time people spend watching videos. And when you and YouTube has a great analytics. And when I go and I watch, okay, how come I spend all this time watching my videos? Are videos that I, I, I recorded and published like three years ago, four years ago. And Facebook doesn't have the power because Facebook, after a couple of days, disappear from your timeline. So the truth is you want to have both. Short term, Facebook's better. Long term, YouTube is better. And you got to be consistent. For me, okay, I'll tell you, for me and for my clients, if you're super connected with your purpose, then you want to love video marketing because all it is, you're capturing the conversations you have with your patients, clients, and your ideas, and you're putting out there to, to inspire more people. Now, if you watch our channel, we have hundreds of videos, I think 300 plus, almost 400 videos. Is you, You're not going to find a perfect video <laughs> there. You won't find a perfect video, but you want to find people, video, a lot of views, people who share, create an impact. And in school, because now when we do have events or, or, or products and we offer them online, I got, we got, we get orders from Italy, from Iceland, from places that I personally never been to and they are there and they all they come because they, they, uh, they found us on YouTube. So it, that would be the, uh, a quick video marketing course. I teach video marketing in, in five words. Number one, why video marketing? Right. And the why is because right now, there's 180 million Americans watch online video for 24 hours a, uh, a month, almost more like the TV, okay? And it's growing. The second word is confidence. You've got to be confident, and the way you do it is by practice, and th- and you communicate to, uh, through video, think in terms of like a portion. You're talking to one person. Second word, confidence. Third word, content. Content is, like I said before, you create this database of content and ideas. Start capturing could it be an old school notebook? Could it be a Word document, a computer? Could it be a Evernote? I use Evernote. Fourth word, technology. Obviously, there's many different ways you can record videos with your computer, with your phone. You can do a screencast, uh, capture videos. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. You start where you are. Right? Make sure you have a good mic. And the fifth word is distribution. So obviously, you're going to do, do a little, spend some time doing some research on YouTube. YouTube have amazing free videos on the title, the tags, and descriptions. But the most important is this. You want to make sure you share everywhere. When I record a video on my process, I upload on YouTube. I put on my blog. I write a, a blurb. I send to my entire mailing list the video with a, on a blog. Then I get the video. I upload on Facebook. And I share on Pinterest. And I share on LinkedIn. And I share everywhere, Twitter everywhere. And, and, and I get now what I'm doing, I'm getting these videos, I'm cutting, I change the size and the time. 
I'm uploading on Instagram because I allow to do one minute videos too. So I'm maximizing the baby. I, I, I get the video and I, I want to, some people call me the matrix. Hey, dude, you're everywhere. Yeah, I want to be everywhere. I'm the matrix guy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to shift and talk about maybe step back from chiropractic specifically, and let's really okay. go to the big picture of success in your life. Okay. So you've obviously been very, very successful, and we learn a lot from all of our successes, but we tend to learn even more from our failures. So is there yeah. any failure or setback or just an obstacle you've overcome? What did you learn from it, and uh, how did you overcome it? Yeah. Well, I would say... <clears throat> Tell a story. When I left Tony Robbins, I opened up my company, and my previous uh, 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 VP of sales, his name is uh, uh, Gene McNaughton, he left the company to work for a guy named Chet Holmes. Chet Holmes used to be a – he passed a couple years ago, but he was a New York Times uh, best-selling author. He wrote a book called The Ultimate Sales Machine, and he started working with Chet Holmes. So a couple months later – Gene calls me up and say, hey, man, Chet and I are doing this big show in Mexico City. And we we need a guy who can speak Spanish. We're gonna, it's going to be a two-day event, 600 people. Can you do it, you know, to translate Chet Holmes? Now, I'm from Brazil and I speak Portuguese. <laughs> and at that time, and I, I obviously, I took some Spanish classes, but Portuguese and Spanish are not the same. And I said, tell me more about it. And he said, well, we're going to have... You know, big show, two screens, you're going to be reading PowerPoint. And I said, of course I can do it. So uh, I gave him my prize, and I never heard back from Gene. Ten days later, on Sunday evening, Gene calls me up. I say, dude, I closed the deal for you. Not this Thursday, the next Thursday. You're going to go to Mexico City for two days speaking eight hours a day. And I freaked out because I haven't spoke Spanish for <laughs> for many years. I literally... I hire a teacher. I found a hire a teacher on Sunday evening. And check this out. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I block everything, I, I all my commitments, and I was taking four hours of Spanish intensive, one-on-one with her, and practicing my talk. They sent me 500 slides, right? And I was doing rehearsals with uh, Chad Holmes at that time. And Chad, because he doesn't speak Spanish, he didn't know if my Spanish was good or not. I was just rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. Now, obviously, I'm not crazy. I wasn't trying to learn Russian, right? Because Spanish and Portuguese sometimes is the same, sometimes is different. So after these 10 intense days, I go to Mexico City, and I get ready. Wake up Friday morning, the most beautiful arena, 600 people, everybody dress up. Mexico City, super formal. The event started. So imagine you have a chat homes on the right side. I'm the left. I'm the translator. So we start the show, and he starts speaking English. I'm starting speaking Spanish, and within five minutes... I see this woman angry walking from the back of the room and he, she called me and uh, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? She goes, we have to remove you from the stage right now. I'm like, right now? It's like, why? And she said, because people, they don't, they don't understand your Spanish accent and they remove me in front of 600 people Wow. and they put him in a little chair in the corner and I'll tell you, that was the most humiliating uh, thing in my career. This is after six years of professional speaking. And I was so angry with myself. Why do, why did I accept? So that Friday I went my, I, I had lunch by myself, dinner by myself, and I went to the, to the room. Nine o'clock in the evening, Gene called me up, the guy who hired me, and said, dude, how are you feeling? And I'm like, man, I don't feel good. He said, I, I need, uh, to ask you a favor. And I said, what, what happens? He goes, look, tomorrow morning on Saturday, I'm supposed to do a two-hour class of public speaking, but I haven't done it. Can you do a two-hour class for me in English? I will have someone translate you in Spanish, but you're not going to get paid. It's not part of your contract, and you don't have to do it. And I said, of course I want to do it because I realized that in life, either you own your results or your results own you. And when I was struggling, sitting in the chair, humiliated, the results are on me, and I promised myself I'm not going back home like that. So I accepted. I rehearsed. And t- I created a talk. I was until 2 a.m. Pre- rehearsing. And uh, and uh, Dr. Richard, Saturday morning was the coolest, probably one of the coolest moments in my life, my career, 
when I walk on that stage and these people look at me like, this guy again? They didn't understand, right? So I start my talk in, Eng- in English. I deliver a world-class two-hour talk in English. And the same people that saw me being kicked out of the stage on Friday, they gave me a standing ovation. And the reason I tell the story, because in speaking, in communication, you are going to have bad days. You are going to fail, but it's worth it. Why? Because you are worth it. The chiropractic message is worth it. And the lives that you transform every single day are worth it. And remember this, the lesson, is that in life, either you own your results or your results own you. Well, do you have any daily habits, rituals, affirmations, things you do every day that help you become more successful? Every day I work out. Every day I read. Every day I listen to audiobooks. Every day. Every day. And and before my speaking, I have my routine. It's not every day that I do that, but when I speak, record a video or, or I have a talk, I put myself in this unstoppable mindset. And I have, I, I, I go into, I, I cultivate three emotions. Love, empathy, and certainty. So I have these techniques, which I put myself in the state of love. And I, I ask these questions that I, I create this state of empathy for the audience. I want to help them. And then I, I do this crazy exercise where I experience this really powerful state of certainty. So that's, and I do this every single time. So one routine every day, I always read, I always work out, I always listen to audiobooks. And when I'm speaking, I always, I have more routines, but I know we're running out of time here. But when I'm speaking, I always talk about, I put myself in this state of love, empathy, and certainty. Who are your heroes? My mom. I love that. You know, a lot of times, especially someone who's worked for Tony Robbins, you hear his name or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger or someone. Big, yeah, but, uh, it's my mom. Well, unfortunately, we are running out of time. I wish I could talk you to you for two, three, four hours, maybe 30 hours, like you said, <laughs> <laughs> because you do have so much knowledge that I would, I would love to gain. But uh, we only have a few minutes left here, so let's talk about a few things before you go. Do you have a favorite book that you want to recommend for our listeners? I don't, I don't have favorite books. I read a lot. I have favorite books. I want to give you – I like to read old school books and new books, right? A lot of people don't, they don't read old books. So I want to give you two. One is called Moving Mountains by Henry – I'm going to spell her last name – B-O-E-T-T-I-N-G-E-R. Moving Mountains, old school book on, on the art of letting others see things your way. Amazing. Just get it. Old school was reading probably like 40 years ago. is amazing. And the second book, which is new school, which is amazing. If you want to understand more about influence, decision making, human behavior, just get this book. Thinking Fast and Slow. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel. Let me spell last name. K-A-H-N-E-M-A-N. K A H. N E M A N is the winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics. Unreal, just unreal stuff. Is that is a yeah? Well, we will uh, we'll link to both of those in our show notes in case our listeners yep. are interested, and we'll also link to that lavalier mic you talked about as well. Uh, Perfect. In case somebody wants to pick one up. Um, what's the best business advice you've ever been told? Uh, 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 best business advice which are really, I'm not perfect on it, but I'm super aware and I try to, to live by. I spend 70% of my time working on the noun business and 30% of my time working on how my business is going to look like a year from today. And I don't do that every day, but I, I, I aim to do this every week. So 70% now speaking, coaching clients, selling, influence, creating content, and 30% developing my new projects, my new products, my new things I'm going to be doing a year from now. Well, Roberto, what is the best way for people to contact you and find out more about what you do? You can go to influenceology.com, influenceology.com. For the Kairos out there, we have a new site called publicspeakingforkairos.com, and my email is roberto 
at influenceology.com. Well, thank you once again for being on the show. I have enjoyed it so much. And thanks so much for being you know, forthcoming with everything that you know. You really provided some value, I think, for everyone who listens to this. Well, welcome. I was super excited to, uh, to be on the show today. So thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com.